Hey fam, welcome back to Progressive Politics. This week, Stitt signed anti-trans legislation, unleashing a new wave of negative national headlines. Governor Stitt tweeted, I just signed Senate Bill 3 to prevent gender transition services for minors at Oklahoma's Children's Hospital at OU Health. Youth aren't getting these irreversible gender surgeries. The youth are most likely receiving hormone therapies, which are 100% reversible. Some side effects are not as easy to go away, but still highly likely. So the fact that he's just fear-mongering on misinformation. They have to lie about the whole situation, right? I mean, virtually no kids were getting surgeries to begin with. It was like hormone replacement therapy. It's also an incredibly small portion of the population. The other issue on this, too, was is they were going to withhold $108 million in federal funds. That's not money for gender transition services. That's money for cancer treatment, for, you know, everything OU Medical does. So you've taken our number one trauma center in the state, and you're just going to deny it funding because they do a teeny tiny number of gender-affirming care procedures or therapies each year. I mean, it's... It is total garbage. It's total bigotry. It is not based in reality. Think about all the things kids get done medically, from cosmetic surgery to sports. I mean, like, how many kids give themselves debilitating lifelong injuries to go out and play football or gymnastics or whatever? And, you know, we don't bat an eye at that. We wouldn't call that child abuse and, you know, take supplements and do all this shit to change their body. We don't question that, but, you know, somebody wants to live their best trans life and it's like, whoa, 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 you can't do that? It's, it is so stupid. So this, this story thing. dropped yesterday. Stitzcom's team um, is out lying about uh, an upcoming debate that they're trying to get scheduled and blaming the liberal media, of course. So the far lefties over at News 9, which is among one of the most conservative news stations in our entire community, um, have been trying to set up a debate with Kevin Stitt. Uh, they've got one currently scheduled on October 19th that's going to be uh, broadcast on OETA. It's going to be broadcast statewide, so that one's set up. But News 9 wanted a televised debate like in their studio to do, and they've been asking him for a long time. Kevin Sitt posted this weird Facebook post where it's like, hey, we're going to be debating, we're going to be doing all this stuff, and it said, unfortunately, News 9 contacted our campaign last night and said, because we have not given Griffin Media an exclusive commitment at their studios yet, they will start issuing negative tone stories coupled with new poll, with a new poll they paid for. So disappointing. So... This just can't be true. This isn't true. There is an email. With yeah, like, they're not even saying we're going to run anti-stit stuff. They just said that they're going to tell people that he is refusing to not commit to this debate, which Joy has committed to for several months. So, like... So they're taking this as a threat. Like, I don't know how... A polite email saying, hey, are you good for the 24th? Well, it's like they just took the information in this and they're like, oh, this is an attack. Because the second page of this email says, the Hoffmeister campaign has confirmed her participation. Then the very last sentence, also, there are now two polls that show a close race. And Stitt took this as, oh, if I don't immediately say I'm going to participate in this governor's debate that I kind of already agreed to. It was like Fox News 9. (laughs) What is it? KOCO and then K4. All right, y'all. It's not just Herschel Walker who's paying for abortions. Eric Roberts has also been confirmed to pay for an abortion back in 1988, I believe. Um, hypocrisy going around. None of this stuff that they ever pass mm-hmm. is about them. It is all about the rest of us not being able to do what we need to do. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a universal issue that everybody cares about. To say that nobody supports getting an abortion is just a gaslighting lie. Eric Roberts can go suck my fat toe, (laughs) and Herschel Walker can go lose an election in November, courtesy of his gay black son. Yeah, (laughs) Herschel Walker thing. I mean, you know, as Taz mentioned, it was his gay son that was like, I'm sick of the lies, you know? Like, you didn't raise any of these kids. You know, now you're all pro-life and all pro-family and all this stuff. And so, you know, yeah, they don't believe any of this. It's all about control. It's all about using the power of the state to tell people how to live their lives. And it's, it's gross and it's bad. Like, 
people should not be forced to bear children if they're not ready for it, if they don't want it, or if there's a myriad of medical reasons why they shouldn't do it. Okay, so know. our next story that we're going to talk about is um, a new study came out that showed that almost 600,000 deaths in Ohio and Florida shows that Republican voters had a far higher excess death rate than registered Democrats during the pandemic, and almost all of that gap coming after vaccines were available. So they, the way these studies sort of work, and I mean, and you see this in like all the data on COVID. I mean, obviously COVID affected everybody differently, but like if you were older, you had a significantly higher chance of dying. I mean, like it was much deadlier for, for elderly folks who also happened to be voters. So they basically crossed the deaths with voter rolls and started to suss out if there was a difference between voter registration. And lo and behold, there was. Because if you were part of the, and you can see it in polling and other stuff where vaccination rates were significantly lowered, lower amongst registered uh, Republicans than Democrats, and subsequently many more of them died. Uh, yeah, I think this R. could R. have. A, the haters. I mean, this could have a material impact. I mean, around fifteen thousand people died in Oklahoma, and if there was a significant spread, you know, between Republicans and Democrats on that, um, you know, you're li and you know, very awful liberals argued this during COVID. It's like you're killing your own voters. Accelerating with Delta, Republicans began dying at significantly higher rates as wild. Next Monday, October 10th, the Julius Jones Coalition plans to deliver petitions against the death penalty. Uh, the Julius Jones Coalition goes and joins a much larger coalition. October 10th is going to be marked as the World Day Against the Death Penalty, um, an organization advocating for the release of former death row prisoners. Julius Jones will join a group of people who were exonerated from death row in order to deliver a petition to Governor Kevin Stitt at the state capitol. Um, the petition's calling on Governor Kevin Stitt to immediately stop currently scheduled executions and place a moratorium on the death penalty. Um, I think we've been calling for this for a long time now. Folks who have been within the coalition have been vehemently opposed to the death penalty. People on both sides of the aisle, um, including large conservative organizations like CPAC, have, been, uh, have come out against the death penalty as well. And also, the state of Oklahoma has a history of botching plenty of executions. We had, what, like three or four botched executions in a row, with that moratorium being like a six-year space in between some of them, and we still can't do it right 100% of the time, then I don't think we deserve to do it. Also, down in this article, killing people to show people that killing people is wrong is just never going to be the answer. It's never going to be the right way to handle things. Especially in Julius's case, obviously there was extreme amounts of reasonable doubt presented and Governor Stitt still waited until four hours until his execution before he um, announced his clemency. Obviously there's a lot going on behind the scenes that needs to be addressed and handled and until we can fix all of those things behind the scenes, the death penalty needs to be gone, abolished. I mean the last person that was recommended clemency they killed anyway so oklahoma did codify the death penalty into our constitution by a very significant vote i mean 66 33 um back in 2016 it got suspended in the 50s 60s 70s somewhere around there and then the supreme court like overturned it and said you can and then it, then it kicked it back to the state. So, like, some states have abolished it, and some states haven't. So it's like a, a hodgepodge issue. But, yeah, I mean, it could be abolished federally. So. President Joe Biden took steps to overhaul U.S. policy on marijuana by pardoning thousands of people with federal offenses for simple marijuana possession and initiating a review of how the drug is classified. And what I say to that is... Legalize it on the federal level already, please. Going to jail on the federal level for simple possession right. is is a lot. I think a lot of the people who are still serving time on a federal sentence, they had marijuana like back in like the 60s or 70s whenever this is considered like an extremely controlled substance or whatever. Nick, I mean, if you're you're the one who grew up in the era of the war on drugs, so you tell us is bad. I mean, you know, like obviously everyone should read Michelle Alexander's A New Jim Crow, like that's really the best way to frame, I think, the war on drugs. Like, it is a failure in every conceivable way. 
Um, it has destroyed countless families. It has led to a massive over-incarceration issue. It has never addressed the root causes of why people abuse substances in the first place. It's terrible. So um, if you follow at Prison Culture on uh, Twitter, they are great uh, criminal justice resource, but they said, let me summarize and then log off for the night. This executive order covers federal simple possession convictions, nothing else. It excluded undocumented people who have simple po possession convictions. Pardons do not mean release from prison and there's no one currently incarcerated for simple possession in the federal system. Federal pardons are not expungements of criminal records. Administration says about 6,500 will be pardoned. That's it. That's the executive order. Whatever else is being discussed on here, our hopes, opinions, conjecture, etc. You're welcome. This is like a nod, I think, to what many of us wish and hope and obviously all available polling says is the decriminalization completely of marijuana. Um, you know, I agree. I agree with the, this take. Like, I don't, I, I think it is, and they had another tweet this morning saying it's very counterproductive to lie about what this did. So I don't think any of us have, like, real illusions about, you know, most people are locked up in jails and state prisons. I mean, like, you know, states like Oklahoma still probably have a ton of people in, in for simple possession. I mean, I think electorally this is a very smart decision for him. Yeah. Um, if you've noticed over the course of the last year, like all of those campaign promises that he was talking about during the 2020 election are starting to come about in process. Um, of course, a lot of us on the progressive side wanted to have like things like $50,000 um, used for the elimination of student loans. He dropped the 10. Some people woke up to that very happy. Um, we want to see a complete uh, recreationalization and legalization of cannabis with expungements. Now he's hinting at, okay, we're going to let people off um, from those previous you know, charges and whatnot. Um, but a lot of people in the industry really are applauding things like this. I think, though, in the context of Oklahoma, if it were to become legalized across the board... It wouldn't be a bad thing for us. I mean, that's really the big problem and why you see racial disparities, why you see poor people getting locked up is is like the discretion to use these very low level offenses to like completely train wreck someone's life right. or get leverage on them, you know, and, and yeah. the outcomes are very different. You know, like we don't, there aren't tons of, you know, white frat boys spending time in county jails because of underage drinking. Like that literally never happens. Thank you for joining right. oh. Sorry. God damn it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week on Progressive Politics. Follow us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of them. Uh, we will continue to keep you informed. Uh, voter registration is due October 14th, so you have one week to get registered and then vote on November 8th. See you next time.